right, y'all. Before we get this video started, I had some people ask how the last painting dried. Here it is dry. It looks great. I'm in love with this piece. Totally. Satchmo! Satchmo! Stop it. Uh, so... <laughs> Oh, he's been awful rotten today. So, I got new lights in here. These are daylight. It hurts my skin. But, uh, this is actually in the kitchen. And when you, when you walk in, it's shockingly bright in here. Uh, it's going to take a little getting used to. But, the colors are showing up much better on the camera. I love this little section right here. It's just very ethereal. There's some glare. If you can see that. It came out beautifully. Just these colors together. Wow, wow, wow. I definitely need to do more with that. That blue with that reddish orange. Ooh. Loving this piece. This one's going to be hard to let go of. But, uh, okay. On to the next piece. Hey, everybody. Gina Toluca here. I got new lights. It's very bright in here. I feel like I need to put on some SPF. Now you guys can see how pale I really am without that nice, warm, yellow glow. But now I can see what color my paints really are, which is pretty awesome today. We are conducting more experiments with the Satin Enamel by Deco Art. Uh, I'm using pure white. I wanted to see if this stuff was strong enough to make a metallic paint sell the way that it sells, those big fluffy cells. So I have Artist Loft Silver Artist Loft Old Gold. I have Artist Loft Black in the Flow Acrylic. That is going to be my base coat and my background color. When I mixed the gold with the Satin Enamel White, so I do about 25% Satin Enamel White, 75% of whatever other color paint I'm using. It came out a very pale, fleshy color. It was pretty, but not really what I was going for. So then I added uh, some copper to it. Still wasn't doing it for me, still very fleshy. So then I added some of the cadmium yellow light hue and it brought me back to a goldish color. Uh, not quite as pure as the old gold but not fleshy, at least has the appearance of gold. The silver came out uh, kind of like a pearly gray. It's not as shiny of a silver. Uh, consistency, what you're looking for. When you drizzle your paint into your cup, it just disappears. It does not form a mound. It does not sink. It just disappears. Satchmo, get down. Satchmo. Oh, boy. He is being so rotten today. He's obsessed. Okay, these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And I have added just a touch, a little bit, of the Liquitex pouring medium. I have found that when I add just even a little bit of that, it really helps the paint to stick to the sides of the canvas on a straight pour better. Because it's so thin and because Floetrol is a work time extender, uh, the paint keeps pulling off the sides, but the Liquitex has a tendency to set up kind of quickly, so it really helps to adhere to the sides and give you better coverage. The paint have been thin to consistency with my 90% water and 10% Floetrol mixture. 
Obviously there is no white in this black and there is no white in just the straight gold. All right, I'm gonna put a bit of this in my cup. All right, let's make this happen. Okay, the base coat is down. Let's put some more paint in this cup. I am going to do the straight gold over top of the black, and that should become lacing in the cells, like in between the cells. It should appear on top of the black. Should. <laughs> I'll do the silver next. And I'm kind of pouring that heavy. I'm letting it sink instead of doing a delicate layer. And the same with the gold. Okay, most of my gold has sank, sunken. I do that every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, let me get rid of that cat hair before that becomes part of the party. All right, my gold is gone. That's what I want. That is exactly what I want to see when I'm doing a straight pour. When that base color is the only thing I see coming out that usually means good things are gonna happen. Pop some bubbles. Again, there's no silicone in this. These little cells are from the air bubbles popping up and bringing paint with it. That's also why you want to pop the bubbles in your base coat particularly if you're using something that will not look nice if it pops up accidentally. Now be patient. It's hard, I know. But cells will pop up and then you can stretch them. Okay, this has been sitting for about five minutes. I'm sure if I let it sit longer, more cells would pop up, but I am using Liquitex pouring medium in my mixture, so it will set up quickly. Don't wanna let it sit too long. So right now I'm just gonna move this around, stretch it out a bit and see what other goodies lie in wait. These gold cells are a little odd. We'll see what happens when we start really stretching. Always remember to bring your paint back to center before changing directions.
Okay, well, I'm gonna tip some off of that corner there. The silver seems to be more accepting. of the satin enamel. I'm really liking where this is stretched out. I would like to get some more of that going. Maybe just try to catch that one big gold cell and stretch that. really provide a lot of a lot more balance on that side. Okay, well this is kind of some crazy looking cells. But I think there's gonna be more popping up, uh, particularly in the gold 
So I'm gonna let this sit and see what happens. And we'll be back in just a few. Okay, so here it is. You can see the edges have started to dry. Cells all over the place. Different shapes. Uh, the gold has much smaller cells than the silver. That may have to do with the yellow that was added to that. Don't know. More testing is needed. I did have a couple of odd, just random black cells. That one's just a big one. Looks like a black hole. I may have to do something with that. I find that distracting. I may have to put some kind of swirl in there or something. Make it a real black hole. But, uh, yeah, there it is. So it does help to make a, a metallic cell. You do lose some of your metallicness, so to speak. I mean, it is still shiny. It's hard to tell. Uh, but you can see there is still glitteriness to it. It'll be interesting to see how it dries. That's always the real test when we're talking about metallics. But uh, all in all, I say it does work. You know, little a little bit of uh, tweaking is needed, but I I would say that's a yes. So I hope you learned something. Uh, please like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, if you find these tutorials helpful and you would like to help me stay stocked up in supplies so I can keep bringing you this fresh content, a uh, great way to do that is by my uh, PayPal tip jar. You can find that in the description box below. Uh, you can also find my Amazon store. Anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, if you enter through that link, I will make a small commission of at no additional cost to you. My website, GinaDeLuca.net, pop on over there. You can buy some artwork. You can buy some, some of my music. And our group on Facebook. Go make some art. Join us over there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Should you find yourself in a painting pickle? And, uh, yeah, get some inspiration. If you're wondering what happened to that spot right there, uh, let's just say I leaned into it. <laughs> eh, it happens. So that is it for me, y'all. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.